Hello guys, in this video tutorial we will be building a PHP REST framework from scratch and we are not going to use any sort of advanced frameworks like Laravel and Coordinator and this way you can learn how you can handle the requests like put, post, delete and get requests in PHP as well as you can also uh, get a gist of how object oriented programming works so let's go and get started with this tutorial so firstly make sure your MAM server is running so which I have currently it's not but it now has started to run my MAM server and it will load up a page in the browser so far my SQL server is started and it's MAM utility page is running now on localhost 4 times 8 so go into my root of the direct root of the SD deck STXs. these are the my projects which I have been working on so far but now I'm just gonna quickly create another project so I recommend Visual Studio code in order to write codes and I'm gonna open a folder over here in my ST docs and I'm gonna create a folder PHP API rest so in which this directory is open and this will be the root of our project so let me go and just change the size so that you can see all the things whatever we are working on and currently it's empty now if I reload this page we have this PHP API rest over here now if I wanted to go to the database I can simply click on tools and go to the my PHP my admin and this will load up the database so I'll be creating first is the database so let's go and create a database and our database will be PHP REST API PHP and let's get create and the columns will be 5 and the table name will be posts so this will be the table name and first one will be the integer type which is ID and that will be the ID of the post and auto increment will be set so then next column will be the title and which will be our varchar and it can accept the characters of 200 so we are basically limiting the characters then here we have the body and the body section it will be of text and I'm not going to specify any length for the text because body can be any long also then next field which we are going to define is author that is that will be a varchar and we are accepting the name up to 80 characters then next one will be the created at and this will be uh, timestamp timestamp and by default it will it is going to create the current timestamp so we are all set with our database and here we have our post table which have post and the structure of this post table is id title body author and created at so let's go and create some files in my root directory so to go and go to my root of the project in visual studio code i'm going to create first file that is index.php so simply this will be a php tag and i'm just echo out here this is the root of the project and if i go and reload this page and click on this page this is the root of the project is here so my map server uh, my map server is also running and that's all so next quickly i'm gonna create some folders here first one will be classes and next one will be api and here i'm gonna create one file that is posts.php and the second one will be in the classes directory that is database.php so this way providing a structure to our project and now let's go and create something else so if i currently go head over to my index.php page we, we are just seeing in the url that we are not getting index.php if i run this thing type it manually we are again see this index.php so by default php loads up the index.php script in the root directory otherwise you have to specify nothing and if i go ahead and create something write something else instead of index file like hello it gives url php api hello.php was not found on the server so in order to deal with this we i don't want to put this index.php in every url 
or every route of the project so in order to deal with that thing i'm going to create a new file dart that is dot hd access and i'm going to quickly grab some snippets which i have created from the other created in other project so this thing is basically gonna uh, if it is if we have any 404 request because this is a kind of 404 request this is a 404 request because that page is not found over there so this thing is gonna uh, redirect the user to this index.php page so now if i go ahead and give this a try then we are gonna see it automatically it is redirected to our index.php file which is this so i'll be mentioning this code code in the description where we can you can simply grab and copy and uh, paste it in the .xt access file so let's go and create something so first we will be to deal with the database i'm gonna i'm gonna go to my database.php file in classes open P, open php tags and i'm gonna call, call a class that will be db and i'm gonna define a private static function connect so the, basically this function is gonna connect our uh, our database connect to our database so i define a pdo object which is equal to new pdo and it accepts three parameters in there so first parameter is for the database name second parameter is for the password uh, username as well as password so in this way we can interact with the database so first one to connect with our uh, here we have to specify our database which we are connecting with so currently in my case we are connecting with mysql so we are will provide simply mysql host equal to localhost and our mysql server is running on port 889 because you can see find it out over here uh, in the documentation of the MAMP root project so my to connect with the MySQL this runs on the port 8889 and if you are in ZAP you can directly use you, do, you need not to specify this thing it runs on port 333 something 606 then also uh, we have to specify the database name so we can simply write db name equal to and our database is php uh, we can we just create php rest api php so our database will be rest api php so this is the name of the database the second parameter will be the username that will in my case that is a root because i haven't set to anything else and then again root so we are all set with our pdo connection pdo object ready so now in order to access this thing we can simply write pdo set attribute in which we will pass a argument atr error mode second argument will be pdo error mode exception in order to deal with any kind of error in this and at last we are going to return that pdo object that we created so we can simply write return dollar pdo so in this way we are con we are just providing an instance where we can uh, we can connect with the database so now i'm going to quickly create another function that is public static function query and in this i'm gonna pass two parameters so query dollar parameters params which will be and by default this will be array of empty array if we haven't passed any sort of parameters as a array as a parameter in this function so it will quickly take it as a default empty or empty array object to interact with the database i'm just gonna quickly write some quotes so statement is equal to self so basically we are referencing this instance of this class so we will simply say connect and then prepare and here we'll put pass our query which we are gonna write the next one is like statement sorry, stmt 
is equal to we need to execute that query execute and we'll bind that params over here params so whatever the parameters we are passing in here will go through this and it will execute our query now one more thing this will give you an error because if you are going to retrieve any data we need to return something but this is if the parameter is empty then we are gonna have a, so to handle that kind of thing we can simply check if the query starts with select type something so this will be simply dollar query and at zero index so this basically this function is gonna explode this query variable which will be the string into the array of a string and if its first parameter is equal to first word is equal to select then we are gonna return some data otherwise we are not gonna return any data so data dollar stmp and fetch call and then return dollar data yeah we are all done with the database and to check this whether the database is working properly we can simply go to this url in our root directory and we can simply write now we can simply go to classes folder database.php and we are currently we are not getting any sort of error this page should be loading loading blank and if it if it is so then we have successfully connected to our database so now let's go to index page index.php page and in which i'm going to define some headers because we will be we are creating some global api for so that other origin or other origin of request can be allowed so for that we have to mention some headers and enable course there so access control allow origin and which we set to all because in this case we are just gonna accept any sort of permit any sort of request from anywhere then second parameter will be header access control allow methods so basically we are specifying all the methods all the type of request which we can handle through this route uh, that will be the post type of request as well we will be dealing with the get request also then delete request then put request also so basically we are allowing this php file to handle all sort of requests that it post get delete and put request so that's why we are specifying that that line in here so now let me quickly show how we can check whatever the method we are dealing with so for that i'm going to create method variable and which will simply simply echo out simply have the method to get request method and now if i save and if i go to echo this out dollar method and now if i go to postman so i'll be heavily using postman in this series so currently if i'm gonna make this uh this route so currently it is localhost 888 and then php api rest and if i go here it's a get method that automatically found which method we are dealing with. now if i go and yeah so we are getting post method so now if i go ahead and check for other methods too like we can go for the put request and we are getting put over here so in this way we are able to map requests whatever the request we are using getting here so let me quickly comment this line out and then i'm gonna create some more so now we need to grab the url and get uh, get what type of url which we are dealing with so for that i'm gonna request i'm gonna create a variable request uri that is dollar underscore server and request 
URI. We pass this parameter. And now let's go and echo this out. What we are dealing with here. So request URI, and if I just simply echo it out, and now if I send it, we are dealing. We are getting this root here. Now if I go ahead, write something else like post, and if I send this thing, we are getting this here. So this is basically giving a URL of that file. So in this way, we can get the requested URL. Then I'm gonna create one more variable that is dollar URL in order to uh, sanitize that thing. So simply I'm gonna use R trim, and here I'm gonna trim the last last slash which we are getting over here. So we can simply do that. Or if there is, then we can simply pass this request URI. And if I echo out dollar URL, now quickly see what we are getting. We are getting this thing as a post. And now if I put slash also over here, then again we are getting this thing. So this is basically method we are we are just getting the URL. Now if I go ahead and write another function because firstly we have to filter that we are URL so for that filter inbuilt php function is filter var and here I'm gonna put request URI and filter sanitize URL this is a function which will be executed in order to filter that any other like we have and percents and breaks in there so now if i go ahead and just quickly reload this page we might not get any changes but it is basically filtering our url and putting a slash over here and if i make it this post again we are getting it properly so in this way we can format our url basically so now we need to get the param parameters from the url so for that we can simply write explode we can use explode function and I'm gonna explode that URL with this thing. So now if I go ahead and put let's put a var print r function which will give you the what which we are getting. so if I go ahead and make this send request we are getting that at first parameter we are getting then it will thing in the second parameter we are getting this part and in the third parameter we are getting this part so if i go ahead and write something else like users and if i send it over here now we get users also so basically this line of code is uh, exploding that string and converting into array and in which the delimiter is forward slash so i'm gonna quickly comment this line out so that it might not so now we are i just want to do like if we are making any any request with this post so i want to reference it with post table which we just created in the database so to do that in order to do that i'm gonna just simply write i'm just simply gonna create a table name variable which is equal to and firstly i'm gonna typecast that thing into a string format and then dollar url and that will be three because we are getting at third position but uh, i also want to append this api here because before making this request i want to just go and get append that thing so now if i go ahead and echo this table name over here so for that i can simply use print r dollar table name and if i go ahead and send this thing out we are getting post over here so in this way we can simply get the table name reference to the table name now we are also checking for if there's any id associated like for this one i will just want to get the post from the database which has the id one and if i pass pass five over here we can simply get the fifth post from the database so to do that we are just gonna check if url at position 4 is not equal to null 
then we are simply gonna convert that thing into id and which will be a integer type so i'm gonna quickly type cast that thing into dollar url because by default it will be sending into a string it will be after exploding also it will be converted into a string part so i'm gonna type cast that thing and if dollar id if there's nothing then we're simply gonna put it now so in this way we have already dealt with the routes requested routes so now we are just gonna like we are gonna check what type of tables we have in our column uh, in our database so to do that i'm just gonna create a variable very quickly that is over here that is dollar or not here let me just format this code quickly yeah dollar tables and this will be an array in which we'll be having our tables so currently we have post table in the database so i'm gonna quickly check that out whether that uh, that table name exists in this table so for to do that we can simply check we have a function called in array and it accepts two parameters first one is the the value to be checked in that array so that value is in our table name and second parameter is the array from in which we are checking and if it is true then i want to echo out whatever we are getting include that api route else we are just simply gonna echo out table does not exist so if i go ahead and reload the if i go ahead and send this thing we can we are getting null because or we can simply write this thing we can echo out this thing over here and table table does exist so if i go and send table does exist we are getting and if i change this thing to user something else table does not exist we are getting as a message so basically we are dealing with the things in that way so now i'm gonna go to my api files to your post so this will be the api route uh, which will be dealing with all the all the things related to the post object our post table in the database so basically now we are gonna include that once and we are it accept a string in the current directory go to api then posts.php file this thing happens and now if i go ahead and simply write echo echo out this is post function handler so now if i go to my postman if i go send this thing we are getting table does not exist and if i write post currently we are not doing anything else than this then this is a post handler function that means that file has been included successfully in our index.php file so now let's go and create some logics over here yeah one more thing if all these things are working properly we want we also want to include our database which we have created in our classes folder so to that i can like simply write include ones classes and the file name is database.php and if everything goes well we should not get any sort of error in here so it's obviously it's always good to check your routes each and every at every action so now if i check out uh, what kind of methods we are getting we have already checked that thing so firstly i want to go for the methods if methods equals to get type because with the get type methods i just want to give particular a post from the database which will be having some id at the route and if it is not so we are going to check that thing out over here if dollar id if it is there 
it's not equal to null then we want to grab the data from the database uh, with that associated with that id so for that i can simply write dollar data equal to db query and our function which we created in the database was simple query we are including that query and we are creating the instance of the db class which we have created in the database over here so i'm gonna execute that function over here and here i'll be writing my query select all from and here if I, we have already had the table name in our table name variable so i can simply write and i'm using double quotes over here so i can simply reference the table name table name variable over here and then check where id equal to dollar id and i'm gonna pass the parameter array in which i'm gonna give this key of id which will be referenced over here so here will be our id and now this data will hold all the values in the database uh, all the values all this will fetch the data from the database or particular post from the database so let's go and echo out uh, or firstly we can give a message if dollar data not equal to null then i'm gonna simply give that data back echo json code this is a method to give the JSON response from the data in PHP and I'm gonna go to let's go and quickly check what we are getting and if it is not if it is empty then we are gonna simply write give that um, the message will be currently there are no posts in the database and now let's go ahead currently we don't have any post in the database so if I send this request change this method so the method type is get type and if I send currently we don't have any post in the database. yeah uh, quick fix over here I just mentioned s over here now if I go and send this thing over here so we are getting a JSON response which means currently we don't have any so now let's go and handle other routes if we have something in the database then return that thing so else in my else block I will simply write this thing and this else is respect to this thing so I'm um, if we have some if we have so we will simply echo out every every query from the database so for that we can simply write dollar data equal to db and query and we will simply write select all from and we have dollar table name here and then we will simply echo out that data echo json encode and we'll pass that data back so if I save this file now if I go ahead and if I send back if I get rid of this thing we'll get null object because currently we don't have any data in our database so this was the uh, this was the thing to handle our get request so now if we'll go to the L, else if block and if dollar method equal to post request that means we have to add some data to the database so for that I will simply write if dollar underscore post not equal to null as well as our id is empty field id field is empty or null then we are gonna post that data we are gonna add that database data to the database so now we have to just extract those variables from post object which is a super global so to get those things we can simply go write this function as like extract 
and this accepts to our accepts the argument in which it will be the or post variable now if i go ahead and put something like we just simply gonna print that thing r it's kind of helpful in debugging so i can simply write uh, currently our post table will be having something in it so let's say i have title so we get the access to that variable now if i save and go to my postman i make a post request from here to this post table and that will be like uh, some key to that thing uh, i'm gonna go to headers over here x form url encoded you can simply write here title nandy mandy whatever we are getting that thing here so this means whatever the parameters which we will be passing we can we have a direct access to them using this thing extract function and currently our post object uh, post array is containing a key with a title in there so this is quite helpful and in, uh, instead of having all the post so we have uh, access to those form inputs now so now to insert that data db we'll simply write db query and here i'll write query insert into and we have a dollar table name in which table and values and since the first one is the id field which is the auto increment so we won't be passing anything so i'll be simply saying null and then i'm gonna pass title as well as content as well as author and since we have one more field that is created at field and that is a timestamp field and by default it will give you the current timestamp so we have to pass again null to that and now we have to pass that array array of the variables so i'm gonna pass simply right and i'm just gonna this query would, would be quite long so i'm gonna give the word wrap over here so that everything is, comes to the next line so i'm gonna pass that array in which the first parameter will be title uh, as a key and we are accessing title dollar title second one will be like we have a uh, not the content i guess yeah this one is like i guess body so let me go and quickly check it yeah it's a body so instead of content we will simply write body and here we will reference that thing and we will get the body and then we have author field and it will reference to the author variable so in this way we are able to insert a database into database and now we also be sending all that data back to the back to the user after posting it so for that i can simply write data db query and there will be select all from table name order by id tsc limit this will be the query which will give you the latest post from the database because we are just getting those data filled in and i want to get back and so simply to get that send that response back we can simply write json in code and here let me quickly check this out i just want to give a message Post added to the database. Successfully, and the status or success response will be true. And I want to return that post back. So for that, I will give you post. I will give back post key with the data. Dollar data zero 
So this will be our query. And if we don't have these fields null or empty, then we can simply write this query. This will simply say, please fill. We'll give the response back. That is, please fill in all the credentials and success will be in this case will be false and we don't have any post because we haven't got it added to the database so now let's go ahead and create uh, let's make this request i have this mysql server running and it's my and i'm going to my postman i make a post request to this title key the body will be php rest api and body will be this is simple tutorial for php rest api and we have author so by author will be obviously code book and now if i make this request we are getting our database data added to the database and as well as we are getting this code book created at and updated at field also and if i go to my database and if i reload this page we have our post over here which we have successfully made that thing back so in this uh, now if i go to make this get request so i'm going to quickly go to here and just copy this url make this get request so in this case we will be getting our post back from in a sort of in a array so let's go and make one more post post 2 this is the body for the post 2 and send back we are getting the data, data back from there and if i go to my get request now we are getting two posts over here as a json response we were successfully able to add the post to the database as well as get a, get all the posts from the database but we haven't checked so far that to create a single post so i'm just gonna grab the id from the post which has the id and if i send this request we are getting this id over here so currently it is returning the array in which we have the post object so let's go and quickly fix that because i just want to go i just want to get only the post as an object so to do that we have to just put this thing over here and one more thing if i now make this request we are getting only the uh, body uh, only the object post object which has so one more thing you have noticed over here that is id is one but at zero position is also one so basically it is returning me two arrays in a single object and that is why that is one is the associative array while the other one is the indexed array so in order to get only the single one we have to add one more attribute to this that is uh, to our database class in our query function that is video simply fetch a sock and this will be helpful in getting only the associative array now if i make this request and we are will get only the associative array now if i quickly let's go and quickly test this post for the post one we are getting on two posts which we have in the database and if i put two we have second post only the associative array so next thing is like to handle the put and delete request so to do that i want to go and add one more condition else if because since put and post request do have the ids on the on their url and the id we have already grabbed from the request uri here requested uri so if there's id then only we wanna execute this function otherwise we won't so if dollar method equal to equal to and before doing before performing delete operations as well as update operation i want to check whether that post is all there or not so simply for that i will simply write post equal to db query function um, which will be simply in which we'll be getting the id will be passing id select all from 
and we have access to dollar table name with where clause where id equal to our para binded para bind binded id and with this i'll pass an array in which i'll simply write i'll pass the key as id and we'll pass that id over here so now if that id is there if that post object is not null that means that post exists in the database so we can simply check that out if dollar post not equal to null then we will do this else we're gonna simply send back a message to the user that that post does not exist so i can simply copy this line of code over here and put that thing here and message is will be post not found so in this case so let's go and quickly test this out and if i make this put request now if i send back currently it's not doing anything because we haven't tested this for the put and put request so if dollar method equal to equal to put else if dollar method equal to equal to delete so now if I save this file and if I go and send this request over here currently this post exit that's why we are not getting anything if I write something like post 5 the message will be post not found success is false so if that post method is if the method is put then we want to update that diff. but in the beginning when I was a learner then I was like quite confused while doing this thing so to do that let's make a custom variable that is a put one and uh, let's see what it happens what it gives file get contents and in which I'll pass PHP input PHP input and let's go and quickly check what we are getting in this case so if I go ahead and simply for debugging I can simply put print r and dollar underscore put and if I save this thing yeah something went wrong so if I go to my posts file yeah I can simply write print r and in which I'm gonna just put that variable over here so now let's go ahead and make sure you to make a put request we have to go to this not to this body but we have to go to this raw json file and in this text will be json application slash json so first is title hello world a classical example and then we have a body and since it is a json we have to wrap it in that wrap it in double quotes so this is the body for something for something um, author old book and now if I send this request this will be a put request now if I send this request we are getting messages post not found because we haven't given a correct ID now if I send back, we don't get any sort of response. Why is that? Yeah. So I can simply check that out also. Like I can simply go and write in a URL form encoded. So we can simply use title that will be hello world body something happened author currently we are not adding any post to the database so code book and if I send back
Why aren't we getting that thing? Yeah, PHP input. Single. Silly mistakes. Like I said, we are getting title with the space, hello world, and whatever. So for the spaces, we are getting and percent 20. And if I same way, in I, if I go to my raw JSON file and instead of text application slash JSON, if I send back, we are getting this as a object back. So now we have to decode that thing in um, JSON. We have to decode and it is a simply like this part. We have a JSON in code. So simply we have JSON decode for that decode and it accepts two parameters that is true and now if I save and put print R over there what we are gonna get if I send this request we are getting title key with a hello world value and body with this uh, this value so now to we have already we are successfully able to handle our put request but now I just want to make this quickly wrap it in extract method so that we can access each key as a separate variable in the code so now if I just put print underscore r and if I put here dollar title and if I save here and if I send this request we are getting a hello world back and the same way we can simply we can use it for the body so basically this is called object destructuring so now we have access to those variables as a separate variables. So now we have to update the post. Wait. Update the post in the database. So to do that, we can simply write db query function. And here we'll write our query. So update. And we have access to the table name variable that is and set title equal to title parameter and comma content equal to sorry this will be a content this will be body to the body parameter and author author parameter and this will be the query end and we'll pass those it will pass the array and I'm just wrapping it uh, word wrap so we can pass that array over here so title we have dollar title body dollar body And then we have author dollar author. So now if I go and save this thing, the query will work. Now I want to send back the updated post which we have just created. So to get that, we have to write another query to get that post from there. So we can simply write data. And we uh, instantiate db, uh, db object again query in which we'll pass attribute like select all from dollar table name already we have access to it where id equal to id and we'll pass the array in which we we'll bind that ID to the ID parameter dollar ID. So in this way we will get that data back. And now we just want to put send that data back. Echo JSON encode and I want to send back post equal to dollar data and at zero's location and 
the message post updated successfully and success status will be true so this is the query to handle the update request now if I go to this part and if I just go to this API postman if I send this thing we are getting that post and that post message is saying such post updated successfully in the database now if I reload that post over here so we are having hello world ID for something at codebook so now if I make the get request to get all the posts from the database we can simply write this part and send this back we are getting to both the post over here and now if I may let's quickly add one more post we'll simply find that URL yeah we have not in the headers we have to go to body part so here will be title post test body this is body for test post author obviously codebook inc and now if i make this request we are getting the post added to the database success if i go to get post we are getting three posts now and now in order to update that post we are getting the id of that post that is three go to the put request and send this updated title post test and if I send back we are getting this post back from the database and now if I go uh, we are getting that post has been updated oh for, I forgot one more thing uh, we have to add this where clause here mm, this is a way I forgot to write that thing where id equal to id and we have to mention that thing over here that is we have to bind that parameter to the id because it was initially sending the request and it was updating all the posts so i forgot to add that thing so now if i go ahead and update those posts so this is a post 3 this is the body for the post 3 and now if I send back we have post 3 updated and now if I get request we have post for the body 3 so this is the body for the post 3 in the same way we can update second one also let's say post 2 and that gives you post 2 and I want to update the author and if I send this thing back we have updated the post of 2 also so in this way we can interact with the APIs so let me quickly open this well enough so that you can see the full preview so title one updated post test something is fishy then the second is the post body for the post woo in this way we can update the posts so now let's go and quickly handle the delete request so in order to delete in order to handle the delete request it's very simple we have to simply perform this query query delete from dollar table name where id equal to dollar id and i'm gonna find that params to id dollar id and i want to just give you a response back that is same which is post deleted successfully 
so now quickly let's go and delete any post of here so currently we have around three posts in the database and let's go to the database and check them all yeah we have this so I want to get rid of the first post I can simply go and create new tab and go to delete and just copy quickly copy this URI and simply paste it over here and I want to get rid of first post so if I send back we have the post now yeah so I want to quickly grab get rid of this thing so now if I send this thing because success is equal to post not found so let's go and create delete another post that is post 2 and if I send back post deleted successfully success is true so if I go ahead check in the database we have currently single post in the database so this is video about how to how do you can how you can create a rest API in your PHP script if you like the video and want me, me uh, if you want to promote help us in growing our channel you can subscribe share our videos to those guys who want to get started with the programming and php is a great language and don't worry i will be creating other python videos also soon as well as i'll be dealing with other frameworks like angular view and view ionic so a lot of stuff going on so just hit the subscribe button and help us to grow thank you guys